today in AC electrical circuits we're looking at lab number 12 AC power in this exercise we'll be examining power in the AC circuit both in single and three phase circuits this lab is broken into two parts part one is a single phase circuit whereas part two is the YY and the Y delta three phase circuits the reference sections refer to Shams Outlines, Basic Electricity, 2nd Edition. Chapter 15 is on Single Phase Circuits. Chapter 20 is on Three Phase Systems. So in Single Phase Circuits, we're looking at power and power factor. And figure 1510 shows us power time diagram when voltage and current are in phase. And over here in figure 15-11, we can see the power time diagram in the series RL circuit when current lags voltage by a phase angle. And you can see we have this idea of uh, negative power being generated. Figure 15-12 talks about the power triangle. So on the horizontal axes we have real power or true power or active power or power available for work or resistive power. Over here on the vertical axis we have reactive power and we know that comes from XC and XL. And the apparent power is the addition of the reactive power to the real power. So they tell us here that power factor is calculated by taking the real power divided by the apparent power. We have a whole section on power factor correction. And in figure 15-14, we can see we have our load. And it consists of a motor, which has a inductive coil and a resistive element. And if we put a capacitor in parallel with it, we can correct the power factor correction. So chapter 20 talks about three phase systems. Figure 20-1 shows us three phase alternating voltages and it's showing us that there's 120 degrees between each phase. So here's what it would look like on an oscilloscope and here would be a phaser diagram showing them all 120 degrees apart. So in figure 20-2, they're showing the two different connections. The Y connection, where you can see it looks kind of like a Y shape. And the delta connection. And it's basically named after the Greek letter delta. So in figure 20-4, they show us three phase balance load types. So this is the delta configuration and what they're saying is each of these impedances are identical so the currents flowing through them should be identical and the voltage across each of them should be identical. This is the balanced Y load. You'll notice there's a neutral line that goes to the center point but because the load is balanced we will never have a current flowing through the neutral line. Now in the theory overview, we can see that in a DC case, power is equal to voltage times the current. But when we have an inductive or capacitive component to our circuit, the resistor is the active or real power and then the current flowing through the reactive component of your circuit will create reactive power. The apparent power will be the resultant of those two powers. So power factor correction is used in order to make the most efficient use of the current delivered to the load. Ideally, we want a power factor of unity or 1. A low PF is due to inductive loads, such as motors, and this can be corrected by placing a capacitive load 
which produces a leading current in parallel with the load. I just want to remind everybody that when you're working with 120 volts AC, that's an RMS voltage. So if you take the 120 volts AC RMS and divide it by 0.707, you end up with 170 volts peak. Remember, when you have 170 volts peak, you have minus 170 volts on the negative peak. So the peak to peak voltage becomes 340 volts. It's important because when you're calculating a capacitor to go in an AC circuit, the rating of it is the maximum voltage that it can handle. So a 120 volt capacitor is not sufficient for 120 volts AC RMS. You need a capacitor that's rated at a voltage greater than 340 volts because when you swing from the positive to the negative you're going to end up with a 340 volt difference. So under procedure, step one, we're going to be using the circuit of figure 12-1 with L equal 12 millihenries and R equal 8 ohms. We're going to use an AC source of 120 volts RMS at 60 hertz with a phase angle of 0 degrees. We're to determine the currents, IR, IL, and IT. Record these values in table 12-1. Then calculate the real power, reactive power, apparent power, and power factor recording these values in the same table. So figure 12.1 is a single phase circuit with 120 volts RMS at 60 Hertz going into our 12 millihenry inductor and our 8 ohm resistor. Now I've given you a page for doing your calculations so IR is equal to ET over R which is 120 volts RMS divided by 8 ohms, which is 15 amps RMS. XL, of course, equals 2 pi FL, which works out to 4.5 ohms, and remember it's at an angle of 90 degrees. IL is ET over XL, so that's 120 volts divided by 4.5 ohms, so that works out to 26.5 amps. And IT, remember we're doing the uh, rectangular type calculation using Pythagorean's theorem here. So that's the square root of IR squared plus IL squared. And that works out to 30.5 amps. Doing your power calculations, real power, P, is equal to IR squared times R. And that works out to 1.8 kilowatts. Reactive power is Q, and that's equal to IL squared times XL, and that's measured in VARs. So real power is measured in watts, reactive power is in VARs. And that works out to 3.2 kilovars. Apparent power is S, and that's equal to the total voltage times the total current. And that's measured in volt amps, and that works out to 3.7 kilovolt amps. Power factor is the real power divided by the apparent power, and that worked out to 0 0.49. So in table 12.1, I've recorded my theoretical calculations. So in step two of the procedure, we're to build the circuit of figure 12-1 in multi-SIM. And that's a relief because that was very high currents and we could hurt ourselves with it. We're going to be using R of 8 ohms and L of 12 millihenries. And we're going to use an AC source of 120 volts RMS at 60 hertz. We're to measure the currents IT, IL, and IR. Remember, we have to break the circuit and insert 3 ammeters, and we can get those from the indicator group, and we have to simulate the circuit. 
Now it says remember to change the ammeters to AC. Now we're going to record these values in table 12.1. And then we're going to put an AC voltmeter across the parallel circuit and measure its voltage and record it in table 12.1. Under procedure, step three, we're to use the measured values for I and E to calculate the real power, reactive power, and apparent power and power factor. We're to record these values in table 12.1 and compute and record the percentage deviation between experimental and theory. Now under procedure, step four, we're to insert a watt meter into our circuit to measure the power and power factor. So I've given you an example of a watt meter, and that comes from the right-hand side of multi-sim. Just bring the watt meter in. Notice it's part voltmeter, part ammeter. So the voltmeter gets connected across the circuit, and the ammeter part gets connected through the circuit. Notice the break in the line here. The current comes in to the ammeter, comes out of the ammeter and goes to your circuit. Now under procedure, step five, we're to print your circuit showing all measured values. Uh, we're going to have a problem with the uh, watt meter because that won't print directly from multi-sim. So I'll have to show you how to capture that and put it into a Word document. So I want to show you how to uh, use multi-sim to set up the uh, single phase circuit. So I've got multi-sim on one side, and on the other side here, I have my Word document open. So what I'm going to do in multi-sim is I'm going to go to uh, Place, and the first thing I want to place is a title block. And I'm going to choose Title Block Example 3, and say Open. And just throw it anywhere on your page. We're going to select an area later to print. Now we need to put our name in there, so under document number. So if I double click on it, and we look for document number, I'm going to type in my name. And say OK. So now under document number is my name, so that's my title block. Now I'm going to come up to Place, Component, and the first thing I want to place in here is some ground. So I'm going to go to Sources, Power Sources, and Ground, and say OK. I'm going to need several of these, so I'm just going to drop them on my screen one after another. So there's my second one, third one fourth one, fifth one, so I know I'm going to need them later. I need an AC power source, so I'm going to drop that on my page. And now I'm going to need those inductors, so I'm going to go into basic, and down here I should have inductors. And the inductor is 12 millihenry, so it's selecting 1 millihenry, so I'm going to scroll down. There's 12 millihenrys. Okay. I need one of those. I need a resistor. So somewhere in here should be a resistor. And I have to select its value, so I'm going to select 8 ohms. So there's 8 ohms. Okay, drop that in there. Now I have to take some current and voltage readings. So for that, I'm going to go into indicators. I need an ammeter. I need to measure total current, so that'll be horizontal. So I'll throw that in my circuit. I need a vertical ammeter to measure the current through the inductor and another one to measure the current through the resistor. I need a voltmeter 
and that'll be a vertical voltmeter. So I'll throw that in my circuit. So I think I have enough components in my circuit, so I'm going to close my select component box. So my inductor needs to be rotated, so if I do a left click on it, it highlights it. If I double click on it, it brings up a dialog box so I can change labels, display, value, fault, pins. If I right click on the component, then I can do cut, copy, delete, or rotate. So I'm going to rotate my component. Then I'm going to select my resistor, right click on it, and rotate it. So now I have my two components rotated. Now I have to start thinking about how I'm going to line them up. So one of the things I need to throw in here is going to be a watt meter. So if I come down the right hand side and you can see the first one's a multimeter, function generator, and a watt meter. So I need to throw a watt meter in here. Now you can see things are getting fairly close together. Now the watt meter doesn't have a reading by itself. So if you double click on the watt meter, it brings up its little watt meter display. So I want that to be on my screen, so I'm going to move my components around so I can see the display from the watt meter. So now my ammeter needs to go to that inductor, so I'm going to move my resistor over. So placing these is a little bit of trial and error until you get something that's looking nice. So I'm going to need a ground going to my inductor, a ground for my resistor, and a ground for my voltmeter. So they look lined up a little better. I'm going to move my watt meter over a little bit. I'm going to move my power supply over a little bit, and there's my ammeter. If you want to move a lot of things over at once, you can see where my pointer is. If I hold down the left mouse button, I drag a rectangle around all my components, and now when I do a left mouse click on a component, I move the whole bunch of them over. So once you're happy with your placement, and it's going to take you a while to figure out where you want to place everything. Now the ground symbols you want to line up so that they're all in the same horizontal row just makes your schematic look a lot better. And now I can move my title block up a little bit. And it kind of squeezes it all in for me. So now you have to connect all these. So you find something like the ground and you'll notice the crosshairs changes so it goes from a pointer to crosshairs. So you do a left click on the ground and bring it up to the power supply. Left click on the power supply, bring it over to the ammeter. From the ammeter we have to hook up the watt meter. So the current portion of the watt meter now you don't really want to be joining components directly on their input line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my watt meter up one position 
and I'm going to move my ammeter and all these other components down one position. So now when I try and join things up, they're not going directly into the input of the component. Okay, so what I've joined up here is I've joined up the power supply to the first ammeter, so that's going to be the total current. That's going to flow into the current connections of my watt meter. Out of the watt meter, it flows to the ammeter going to the inductor. So join the inductor up, and the inductor has to go to ground. It also flows to the ammeter that's going to my resistor, so I'm going to hook my resistor up, and my resistor goes to ground. And finally, it's going to hook up my voltmeter, and then my voltmeter gets connected to ground. Now, the ammeter, I need to double click on it, and it brings up the label. So in the label, I'm going to change that to IT. So that's the total current. I'm going to double click on my ammeter again, and where it says value, notice the mode is DC. I need this to be an AC ammeter. I'm going to click on it one more time, and go to display, and it says use sheet visibility settings. I'm going to click on use component specific visibility settings. And I don't want to show all of these labels on here. So I'm going to take off show labels, show values, and show attributes. So it's just going to show the reference designation, which is IT. So I'm going to click on OK. And it gets rid of everything on here except where it was saying IT. So on my next ammeter, I'm going to label it IL. You can't put a space in, but you can put an underscore in and then put an L in. So it's I underscore L. I'm going to double click on it again and in display, use component specific visibility. And I only want the reference designation showing. And then I'm going to click on the IL and drag it till it's above the meter. Double click on the meter again. And in value, I have to change the mode to AC. My next ammeter, double click on it. The label is IR, so I underscore R. OK. I'm going to move the IR till it's above the meter. Double click on the meter again. Go to value and we want AC. And in display, component specific visibility only show the reference designation. Then for the voltmeter, double click on it, change its label, it's going to be E for display, I only want to see the reference designation, under value, it has to be set to AC. I'm going to move the E up a little bit, just so it looks a little better. Okay, now to hook up the voltmeter part of the wattmeter, the plus goes to that input line, the minus goes to the ground. 
Now you can see my power source is already set to 120 volts RMS at 60 hertz. If you double click on it, you can see you can go to label, change its label, go to display, change its display, go to value, put in your 120 volts, any voltage offset, change your frequency. We don't need to change any of those, we're just going to say OK. And now I'm going to go up to this green button here that says Run, and this will simulate my circuit for me. So you can see my IT is at 30 amps, IL is 26 amps, IR is 15 amps. I'm getting almost 120 volts going in. My watt meter is reading 1.8 kilowatts and the power factor is 0.493. You can now stop your simulation. Now if you want to put this into a Word document, all you have to do is press Shift on your keyboard, hold it down, and press Print Screen. Now you can go into your Word document. And the first thing I like to do in a Word document is press a few enters, just to put a few lines into my Word document. Now on the first line of my Word document, I'm going to type in single phase. Now you can highlight that and make the text larger. Make it bold and center it on the page. So now you have a title for your page. Now remember, we've copied the screen, so you can anywhere on your screen, so right underneath single phase, I'm going to do a right click. So when I do a right click, I have the option of doing a paste, and that's pasted in the whole screen that I was using at the time I hit shift and print screen. So if you click on what you've just pasted, It'll highlight it so that you can change the size of it. But if you right click on it, you can do a crop. So with a crop, when you come over to these side bars here, you'll notice it's no longer a pointer or arrows. It's now a little plunger and you can actually move the side of your picture over. You can do the same with the top. Now click somewhere else on your screen. Now you can see just this portion is highlighted. So now when you click on it, you can drag from the side and actually make it larger Now if you click on this little layout box here, you can get the layout options. And normally I pick this one that says text goes top and bottom. So once you've done that, you can actually move your picture around the screen and put it anywhere you like. If you go back to this layout options box, you can go to see more. You can go to Alignment and select Centered, and that will center your picture on the page. Procedure, step number six. It says, from your results, prove that apparent power S can be calculated using the power triangle law, and we're to record these results in Table 12.1 along with the deviation. In procedure step 7, we're using the supplied formula to calculate the capacitance required in parallel with the inductor to get the power factor closer to unity. So we'll record that in table 12.2. Your power factor correction capacitor 
can be calculated using the formula C equals Q, which is reactive power divided by 2 pi F E squared. And that was derived from XC equals 1 over 2 pi F C and QC equals E squared over XC and at unity XC equals XL and QC equals QL. And that works out to approximately 586 microfarads. In table 12.2, for the power factor correction, I've recorded my capacitor that I calculated previously. The power on the watt meter is the same power as above. Remember, this is the real power. The power factor should be 1 or unity, and IC should equal IL from above. Remember, XC should equal XL, and they have the same voltage, so they should have the same current. Under procedure, step 8, we're to place the closest value to your calculated capacitor into your circuit, rerun the simulation, and record the results for C, P, P, F, and IC in table 12.2. We we'll also have to compute and record percent deviation in table 12.2 as well. Going back to multi-sim, we're now going to insert a capacitor. So what I'm going to do is go to place, component. We don't want indicators, we want basic and we want a capacitor. Now we want somewhere around 500 microfarads. So we've got 550, 560, and 680. So 560 is the closest to what we calculated. So I'm going to say OK. I'm going to drop that in my circuit. Now we want to know what the current is going through there, so I'm going to get another indicator. And I'm going to get an ammeter, and we'll get a horizontal ammeter, and say OK, and throw that in my circuit. Now remember, you have to double click on the ammeter. We're going to change the label. It's going to be I underscore C. The display, we're going to use component specific visibility and we only want the reference designation. My capacitor, right click on it and rotate it 90 degrees. Now things are getting a little squished here, so I'm going to highlight everything and then just move it over a little. I'm going to move my watt meter output over slightly. I'm going to move my capacitor over slightly. Now I'm going to hook my ammeter to the circuit. The ammeter to the capacitor, and then my ammeter has to come over to the ground. Now remember, these are all the readings from the last simulation we did, so we have to rerun the simulation. And now you can see the power factor reading is 0.99, which is a lot closer to what we wanted. So I'm going to stop my simulation. I'm going to hit Shift, Print Screen, going back to my Word document. I'm now going to type in single phase dash power factor C O R R E C T I O N. Now I'm going to highlight that. 
go back to my home ribbon, increase the font, make it bold, center it. Then underneath, I'm going to do a right click. And then I'm going to paste. And notice it pastes in the entire screen again. So I'm going to left click on it to highlight it, right click it. Select Crop, and I'm going to slide in my left side, my right side, my bottom, and my top. Click elsewhere on the page, click on it, go to my layout options, I want top and bottom. Grabbing the side here, I'm going to increase the size of my picture. I'm going to go to the layout options, see more, alignment, centered, okay. So now I have my completed single phase outputs in my Word document ready to be printed. I've given you a theory overview for the three phase system. All the calculations we do for single phase are the same for the three phase and if they're a balanced load each of the powers for each line should be the same. I just want to remind you in a three phase four wire Y connection Neutral is the fourth wire, and if it's a balanced load, there should be no current flowing through the neutral. Phase voltage refers to the voltage measured across any one component. So a phase voltage would be across a component. The line voltage is typically from line to line. So while the phase voltage is 120 volts, the line voltage would be 208 volts. In a delta connection, the line voltage and the phase voltage are the same. So in procedure, step number 9, we're to use the circuit of figure 12.2, 12 millihenry inductor, 8 ohm resistor. We're using a three-phase source of 120 volts RMS at 60 hertz. We're to repeat the procedure of step 1 through 6 only, so we're not going to do power factor correction. And we're to record your results in table 12.3. When it gets to the part about using the watt meter, notice we're only going to use one watt meter on one phase to measure the power, and we're going to multiply it by three to get the total power. The two watt meter method doesn't seem to work in multi-sim. So this is our circuit of figure 12.2. It's a three-phase YY circuit, and you can see our inductors come together at a common point. We're not bothering with a neutral line because they're identical and will be a balanced load. Our three resistors are identical, coming together at a common point, and because they're identical, we do not need a neutral line. I have given you the calculations for the three-phase uh, currents. Uh, these are all the formulas, so IR equals EP or E phase over R, and E phase is 120 volts, so that works out to 15 amps. XL is 2 pi FL, and that works out to 4.5 ohms. IL is E phase divided by XL, and that works out to 26.5 amps. 
E line is equal to root 3 times the phase voltage, and that works out to 207.9 volts. I line is equal to the square root of IR squared plus IL squared, and that works out to 30.5 amps. Calculating the three phase power, real power is equal to root 3 times E line times IR, and it's in watts, and that worked out to 5.4 kilowatts. Reactive power, in this case it's QL, is equal to root 3 times E line times IL, and that's in VARS, and that works out to 9.5 kilovars. Apparent power, S is equal to root 3 times E line times I line, and that's measured in volt amps, and that works out to 10.98 kilovolt amps. And our power factor is equal to P, the real power, divided by S, the apparent power, and that works out to 0 0.49. Remember, that's for each load because it's a balanced system. So in table 12.3, I've entered all my calculations under theory for I line, I L, I R, E line, E phase, P, Q, S, power factor. We don't need to do a separate calculation for the watt meter or power factor. They're the same as above and our power triangle. So under procedure step 10 we're going to use the circuit of figure 12.3 this is the Y delta circuit uh, except this time instead of using an inductor we're using a capacitor of 100 microfarads and R equals 8 ohms and we're to repeat procedure step 1 through 6 only recording your results in table 12.4 so this is figure 12.3, it's the three phase Y delta circuit. And looking at it, it looks like the three resistors have a common point. So the three resistors make up the Y circuit. When you look at the capacitors, you can see this capacitor joins this capacitor at this point. The next capacitor joins the next capacitor at this point and the capacitor comes back and joins the first capacitor at this point. So this makes up the delta part of the circuit. Once again, I've given you a page for calculations. So IR is equal to E phase over R, and that works out to 15 amps. We're now using XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC, and that works out to 26.5 ohms. E line is equal to root 3 times E phase, and that works out to 207.9 volts. IC is equal to E line over XC, and that works out to 7.9 amps. And I line is equal to the square root of IR squared plus 3IC squared, and that works out to 20.3 amps. Calculating the powers, real power is equal to root 3 times E line times IR, measured in watts, and that's 5.4 kilowatts. Reactive power, QC, can be simplified to 3 times E line IC, and that's in VARS, and that works out to 4.9 kilovars. Apparent power, S, is equal to root 3 times E line times I line, and that's in volt amps, and that works out to 7.3 kilovolt amps. And power factor is equal to P, real power, divided by S, apparent power, and that works out to 0.74. So in table 12.4, I've recorded my calculations under theory. On the last page of the lab, we have four questions to be answered. 
I've also included some uh, graphs so that you can draw in your power triangles for question number two. When you've completed your lab, remember to show it to your instructor so that they can initial it to indicate that it is complete. Mm -hmm.